Hi everyone. Today I am going to talk about one of the very important design activity in piping design engineering which is a vendor offer review. How to do it and what are the key parameters that you have to check especially when a critical equipment such as pumps. So today in this video we are going to discuss about the 10 key points that you have to check in the vendor offer review for a pump actually. So without wasting your time let me get into the subject. First of all uh, we have to understand how this entire cycle works actually. See when you want to procure a pump or when you want to procure any particular equipment at the first stage you will issue a material requisition which will consist of all the requirements of the especially for a respective equipment. It could be a pump, it could be in a pressure vessel, it could be a strainer or whatever it is. So this document will highlight the major requirements of from the process side and piping side, a mechanical side, uh, for a static side, for a rotatory side actually, for inspections, quality, text, testing, everything will be addressed in this particular document. And this document is going to be the mother document for reviewing. But when you receive a vendor offer, there are some key areas from piping side you have to review. You do not have to review the process side or any other uh, side of uh, engineering. You only have to check the vendor offer from the perspective of piping design. Especially a pump. A pump is a rotary equipment. So rotary engineers will take actions on their respective uh, the, the areas where they have to check it. And process engineers will take the respective actions on the process areas. And likewise instrumentation, electrical and civil, each one will take their own actions for the respective inputs that they have to check. As, uh, so likewise you also have to check the piping design areas and piping design relevant information in the vendor offer. So that's one of the very important thing. So once the vendor offer reviews, you will get a very limited time you will never get a luxury time so it's important to aware what to check and what not to check so that you will use your time wisely so in this video let me show you those 10 points that you really have to check it okay so let me just show you how this works actually so have the ppt prepared for you actually see this is how it works basically so let's imagine that we are going to discuss about the pump fine so in the pump the first most important thing that you have to do is the pump size and weight this you have to check in the vendor drawing why to check the pump size and uh, weight because see uh, it relates to various other inputs for example unless you do not know the pump size you will not be able to finalize the when uh, the pump center line elevation and also you will not be able to size the foundation if you do not know the weight of it and overall size of it so pump size and weight is one of the key document that you have to get it or if the vendor has not provided this information, you have to ensure to write it clearly in the TQ and TBE stage. TQ is something known as a technical query sheet. This technical query sheet will have a list of queries from the respective disciplines. From piping also, you can put a note or you can put a uh, TQ saying that the pump size and weight has to be confirmed by the vendor. So this is the first requirements. Now let's go to the second one. Second one is an NPSH required. What is NPSH required is a net positive suction head required. Generally in a process data sheet NPSH available will be there. So the vendor will provide the pump in order to meet that requirement at some cases based on the process conditions or uh, you they may not be able to meet at that point of time this NPSH required may be higher than the NPSH available. So in that case you might have to change the elevation of the pump. So that's one of the reason why the NPSH required is a key important uh, information in the vendor info that you have to verify. The third one is seal pot arrangement. Generally pump comes with the seal pot arrangement like this. See this is how it is. So there are a small uh, seal pot arrangement. These are very small seal pot ar arrangement. In case of a bigger size pump the seal pot arrangement will be bigger and it will be mounted on the structure. So you need to provide some minimum distance and a maximum maximum distance uh, from the pump. You need to have a bigger pump frames and everything actually. So these informations vendor will have to provide because this is going to impact the sizing of your pump shed. For example, you are going to uh, place couple of pumps or three pumps or four pumps. If 
the pump sizing and if the requirement of the seal pot and everything is going to increase the overall sizing which you have not considered then definitely there will be a difference between your design and the vendor design and it will also impact the civil foundations as well as you have to give the overall sizing to the civil so the key information such as the seal pot arrangement needs to be collected from the vendor uh, inputs see there are cases that vendor will automatically provide but if vendor did not provide you as a piping design engineer has to get it you have to put a comment that unless until this information is classified or if this information is not provided you you we may not be able to proceed for the further procurement of this pump or something like that you have to take an action Taking an appropriate action is also a key part of a design engineering role. So you have to ensure that your uh, design is 100% uh, the uh, assessed of all the informations and it is fixed based on the actual confirmed uh, the facts and numbers. So that's very important. And the fourth one is a case drain. What is case drain? The pump has its own case, right? So the, this is known as a pump casing. So in the pump casing, there will be a drain. So you have to ensure that the vendor provides this because how in case of some maintenance, how do you remove the liquids within the casing only by the case drain actually. For example, look at this video here. This is the pump and you can see a small point over here. So this is the pump case drain. In this case, I am I'm only showing the photo of the pump at but in in reality there will be a small extended pipe with a valve like shown over here so this is what it is actually you need to have an extended pipe from and the valve so that you can open and close whenever you have a requirement to drain this pump drain this pump casing i am not talking about the piping i am only talking about the pump casing pump casing this is this is the body of the pump this is the motor so pump casing is the the casing which is only relevant to the pump not the motor so the whatever liquid that has been collected here that needs to be drained for that pump case drain is very important this you have to ensure in the vendor document or vendor input then the base drain what is base drain base drain is nothing but the drain from the base so there are generally two drains one is the pump casing drain and the pump base drain base drains are drains that are used to remove the residue that are left over in the base maybe it could be uh, the source of a spillage or source of any uh, oil from anywhere from the pump not only from the pump casing anywhere from the pump this will be collected and this will be drained to the the open drain system for that the provision needs to be provided if imagine that if this drain uh, provision is not provided then these uh, liquids will be collected inside the tray and there may not be any opportunity or possibility to remove this drain so it's very important to have this drain which is known as a base drain so always please remember the case drain and base drain both are different so these are not the same actually case drain is the one that comes in the case and the base drain is the one that comes in the base it's true as simple as that to understand now let's go to the next one straight length requirement straight length requirement especially for a suction piping nozzle for example most of the vendors has a requirement of a straight length for a particular pump generally we keep some straight length of 4d to 5d uh, length of uh, the line size but however there are cases that you the um, straight length may be uh, more required from the vendor side so it's wise enough to verify from the vendor requirement to in order to so know what is the actual straight length requirement imagine that you have considered 5d but the vendor is actually wants 8d in order to ensure that the uh, pump runs in an uh, optimal condition because the straight length actually impacts the, uh, the the turbulence of the liquid and the turbulence of the liquid has an impact in the impeller uh, the life cycle so that's very important because of a lot of uh, factors such as cavitation bubble formations and everything so it's wise enough to get the uh, what do you call you need to have this pump uh, the stra the pump straight length requirement for the suction line not for the discharge line discharge line there is no such requirement for the straight length only for the suction line you have a requirement now let's go to the next one the seventh one is you have to verify the nozzle size and rating because that's very important because this is where you have you are going to connect your pump uh, the piping nozzles right this is a suction this is the discharge so you need to aware about the the pump nozzle uh, sizes and drains 
especially what is the sizes of the suction what is the sizes of the drain vendor has to provide this information separately classifying this is a suction line this is a discharge line there may be a size difference between the suction and discharge so you will have to ensure that this is provided from the vendor okay so now let's go to the next one is an allowable load allowable load is something that it is actually you have to get it from the vendor that is basically i'll tell you what is allowable load is about allowable load is the load that the flange of the suction and discharge can withstand basically so once you know the allowable uh, load you can check with the stress engineer whether this loads are sufficient enough to handle the piping or not so that is one of the key reason why this allowable loads are required allowable loads are actually checked by the stress engineer but as a piping design engineer you have to ensure that this input is received from the vendor if vendor is not ready to provide it you have to request them and then get it and give it to the stress engineer only then you can ensure that the nozzles are in safe conditions or not that is very very important basically now uh, i think we have seen this and the, the next one is the uh, asme b16.5 what is asme b16.5 all the flanges whatever flanges that you are going to use especially suction and discharge it has to be in compliance with b16.5 why is it so because your piping flanges is a b16.5 oriented so you will have to use the b16.5 uh, flanges only so if the vendor doesn't comply with your requirement it will not match so you may not be able to connect your piping flanges in the suction nozzle of this uh, pump or the discharge nozzle of the pump for that you need to have the uh, the sizing requirement and the rating requirement and it should also compliance with the b16.5 or not so that is one of the reason why the b16.5 flange requirement has to be ensured with the um, what do you call with the uh, your um, uh, the pump vendor offer so that is very important actually i guess i have covered only nine points over here let me tell you the one of the point that i missed over here is that vendor supplied item what is vendor supplied item vendor supplied items are items that has to come along with the vendor package for example if vendor has quoted for the entire assembly which includes the pump base frames and seal ports and all the hose connections and everything and i'll show you another picture also uh, here we have considered the case drain right this is the pump casing and this is the case drain case drain comes with the valve as well it could be a, a flanged valve or it could be a welded valve but these things has to be provided by the vendor you have to ensure that this particular components are covered in the vendor package say for an example see these are not piping see piping limitations over here this vendor uh, this this piping component in the piping portions will be provided by mm, from our side but the components which comes along with the pump see this is the pump this is the line which is connected with the pump this particular components basically a case drain and base drain valves will be provided by the vendor so you have to ensure that the vendor components are actually listed and a vendor has agreed for, to for the supply of these components otherwise what will happen is that if you don't consider these items or don't take a confirmations during the vendor offer review so of once the pump is delivered you will find that these things are missing for example imagine that if you have not considered the hose connections between the seal pot and the pump who will supply this once these components are delivered then a vendor will come back and say no no this is not agreed in our contract so we cannot supply so finally then it will become a very big headache for the client who, who is going to do the construction so it's important to include whatever components that has to be supplied with the vendor and take a list of that components in a separate sheet and take a confirmation so that is far more important like valves and um, seal pot arrangements or what or, or base drain valves or whatever it is base frames and everything you need to have a list of components agreed with the vendor that is known as the vendor supplied item these are the requirements you have to ensure to verify in the vendor offer review so that you can ensure that these components are supplied in the pump package as well so i will meet you in another fantastic video until then bye from subhash chandra